Now, another very important tool that you need to understand is called match frame. Now, match frame has got a number of uses. Let's just say that here is this clip here. If I double click it, it mounts itself into the viewer window. Okay, as all things do when you double click them in this program. Now, if I was to then give a different in and out, notice how it's shortened the clip over here down on my timeline, which might not be what I wanted. I might want to find the original footage from my browser. It's very difficult to go searching through the browser. So, Apple Z, let's call that a mistake. Click on the frame and we hit F. And the other way of doing this, and what hitting F will do, is launch that particular source footage from the browser in here. So that when I give a different in and out now, it doesn't affect what's on my timeline. And this can be used for a number of reasons. Let's just say I wanted to find the original audio for this clip and my audio has disappeared down below. Delete. Delete is backspace, by the way. Let's just say all of that audio has disappeared. And I'm seeking the audio, the original audio for this. I click on it. I hit F. And there we have the original clip. Now, I want to make sure that this audio does get dragged down. Here you have your audio track select tools, which will allow your program to know where you want the audio to be placed. So in this case, I don't want video because I've already possibly filtered that video clip. So I will deselect my video over here, delink it just by simply clicking it and moving it away from the lock position. And then when I drag down, my audio, I can align it with the clip exactly. And you can notice that there's the original audio over here with the original video and it will be in sync. Very handy. Sometimes if you've got the audio down below and you don't know where the video is and now suddenly because you've changed cutaways or whatever that you want your video back in sync with that, you would Highlight it, hit F, match frame, and it would land up relaunching from the browser, from the original source footage on your hard drive, that original frame so that when you drag down, now remember I have to go, if I want to bring that video in, I have to relink my video, delink my audio. I might have filtered that audio and got it all specially done. I don't want to replace it. I just want the video to be in alignment. Drag it down using N to help align because that's a very powerful tool, N being the snapping tool, remember. And there we have video and audio. Of course, I wouldn't see it now because that clip is on top of it, so that would need to be pulled backwards. And every time you go to the end of a clip, you get a little marker that will allow you to shorten and lengthen. And there we have our original footage. Now, you can't hear anything. What I'm going to do is what's happening is this video and audio is being translated, being pushed through the Firewire into the, the Firewire interface and through your camera or, your, or your, your player and then onto the TV. But because we're not recording the TV and I want the audio to, and video to be localized on the computer only, I would go view external video off. And now when I play here, we hear the audio that we've got. The great Just as a rule of thumb, every time you're faced with some kind of problem on Final Cut Pro, there's a number of things that you can try. And those are, and it sounds quite elementary, but often one, even experienced users, forget to use the basic tools available to them. If you're faced with any particular problem, number one to do is double click it and then see what happens. The other option would be to copy and paste it somewhere. If you wanted to paste it somewhere, you would copy and paste. The other option is to drag and drop it where you want it to be. For instance, I want that to launch in there, I just drag and drop it. If I wanted this one to launch in the viewer, 
I drag and drop it. The other option would be to control click, contextual click. So by control clicking, you land up getting a whole lot of different options available to you to adjust this clip, to change it. And just by reading, which is the next trick, reading with your mind open and with your understanding involved, you would be able to find out a number of things. For instance, there's speed. You can adjust the speed of the clip. And if you go up to the speed control, you can have constant speed, variable speed. Uh, you can reverse your clip, which is something a lot of people want to do. Uh, frame blending helps smooth out the thing. And you could, by going to 50% speed, you would be halving the speed of the clip. It would look like slow-mo. And by going to 200%, uh, you would be doubling the speed of your clip. So that gives you an idea of that. Control click on any clip, on anything, in the, will give you what options are available for that particular clip. And your final option, which is much overlooked, is that any particular clip or item throughout the Macintosh operating system, were you to click on it and then tour your menus. Click on it just once, don't double click on it, and then tour your menus. You will find out and read once again with your understanding. You will find out a number of things that you can do to that clip. And those that you can't do are in gray. So you don't have to worry about them. It's just not available for that clip. And those are the basic sequences of things that you can do when you find yourself stuck on a program. Sometimes when you've taken a lot of time and effort to get the right ins and outs on a clip, and then you've placed it in the position that you might have wanted it, and you find yourself that you want to see something underneath it, uh, or you want to see what the project looks without it, but you don't want to delete it completely, by clicking on it once and going to Modify, Clip Enable, and releasing on that, you see that the clip itself becomes gray. And then it no longer shows, but it's still in the same place, which is very important. So that later on, you can always click on it again. You can go Modify, Clip Enable, and it brings it back. And it's handy that you don't have to delete clips entirely. You can keep your ins and outs and your placement of the clip on the timeline and re-resurrect it, as it were, when you need it. Let's look at getting a little bit of motion into a clip. I'm going to double-click that, launch it into the viewer. We'll go to a fresh sequence over here previous sequence, pull it down, and learn how to animate a basic clip. Get to the start of your clip, and in your canvas window, you will see a little line. That means that is the exact first frame of the clip. If you were to go to the end of your clip, and remember you can hit down arrow, and up arrow, and that bounces you between the next Hit one frame in to the left, and there you have, on your canvas window, you have the last frame of that clip available to you. So let's just say you wanted that clip to land up exactly as it is on the last frame. You would go to Add Motion Keyframe and click on that. Now that tells the clip that you, at that point, on that last frame, will must be exactly as I've set it. And now I can go to the middle of it and by clicking on it, I can tell it that I want it to start up there, for instance, and add another motion keyframe. These are event markers. They tell, you're telling the computer that at that point in time, you want that clip to be there. Now we can see that keyframe when we go and we double click this clip and open it up in motion. And we can see that keyframe by going to the motion swatch of the, of the clip that we've launched in the viewer. And we see that at that last frame, that clip will be in that place. Now remember, this is animating over time. So let's just say I...